Hey everybody, welcome back. I have been working pretty diligently trying to prepare things for this show that's coming up. In Elnora, Indiana, the White River Valley Antique Association puts on a antique show, tractor show, every year. And this is the 34th. I was uh, privileged to be a part of it this year. And so we're going to be part of the homespun market that goes on in one of the barns there. We're back on this lamp that has the big gear... I don't know if it's a farm gear. I have no idea what that came off of. If anybody knows, shoot it down in the comments. There's some green paint left on it, so I'm guessing some kind of farm implement. It does appear to be cast, so it's a little difficult to weld to. Uh, a bike frame to it because the frame, I can't go real hot because I'll melt right through it. And obviously the gear is a heavy weight, so that makes it a little bit challenging. But I just have tacked it up there to see what it's going to look like. I really like the shape a lot. And now we're just trying to get everything all uh, as it's going to be and mocked up. Finally figured out something I was going to put on the end of this to make it look right. And this is actually off of like a garden hose, the end of a garden hose that I cut. It was a little bit longer. And inside is a pole that goes all the way back. I've put a rag here because on the end of that is a piece of rubber that stops that and keeps it from kind of flopping back and forth. And I obviously don't want that to melt. So I weld a little bit, keeping the rag on there, weld a little bit, and then I stop once this bike tube kind of starts to get warm because I don't want to melt that rubber because I have no way to access that once I have welded that end cap on. So I'm just going around trying to pretty everything up. Obviously, we'll be taking this off and kind of welding that up a little bit better than that. The other side, I wish I had two uh, of this type of washer that's down in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, it's a beveled, one of those beveled uh, center crank uh, washers. It looks going to look really pretty. Obviously all the, I use flex core, so once we wipe all that off and make her shiny again, uh, it should be good. But what I'm working on now is down where I've cut the frame apart, there are these holes that are down in here. And I'm trying to just come up with something to pretty that up. So I have cut and again, shooting it into the sun makes it a little challenging. The camera won't focus. There we go. Cut a little piece of copper. I think that's going to look pretty good in there. And we'll just sand those edges down. I'll drill a hole through the middle. We'll put a piece on this other side. Put a bolt and just kind of suck them together. And I may stamp something on there, a date or something. And then we also need to put one right there. So let me get those cut up and put on there. While we're waiting on this to kind of cool off again, I don't even want to grind on that until we have that kind of cooled off. I don't want to melt that rubber piece that's in there. We'll make sure everything functions good. And then <clears throat> everything has working as it's supposed to. And I'll go back. And this frame underneath all of this grime is a bright red. And it looks really awesome. All right, this is the frame I cut off. So that is the red. Hopefully we can pull back out of this gnarly, nasty brown thing. So let me get those cut, get that copper portion done, and then we'll jump back up on top and I'll probably pick you up from that point.
jumped ahead quite a bit on you. I have not wired it yet and steel wooled it and got that back down to red, but everything's assembled and there's a few little issues that I'm not real happy about, but I think that it'll be just fine once we get it all together. So, kiddo inside's a little rowdy. Used a uh, coaster brake for the handle, so when you want to adjust it to tip it, you just loosen pull the coaster brake back, tip it where you want it. It'll tip wherever you need it to go. I think that's going to be just fine. There's a few areas down, down on the bottom here where I couldn't get a grinder in to make them look pretty. But I, I'm happy with that. I still may cut a slot here to make this go back. Let's see if I can get it picture of that. Back to where can't really see it but there's a hole right there and I had intended on putting this screw down there but changed my mind so I may put a slot there so that can actually kick back all the way so that we don't have this gap here. And it's not as smooth as I had hoped it would be on this section pulling out but this section will extend yeah <laughs> can't do it one-handed so it'll extend another you know like i said eight to ten inches camera is not focusing i think that looks pretty good these shades are old photography lamps made in Griffith, Indiana. They actually say Victor on them somewhere. Right there. Smith Victor, Griffith, Indiana. We'll make sure that's up and we have it on. Oops, sorry. And I don't even know if that's the one I'm going to use. I have three of them. Video doesn't really do it justice. This thing's gonna be awesome. All right, with that, let's get some steel wool and get this thing. Started. I just wanted to kind of do a quick overview of that lamp that I made. Uh, previous video you just saw, I'm tacking this on the end of that, so you're getting a, a view of it after it has been completed. The um, I just decided to go with a click switch on the on off rather than do something that dangled. I think the cord is the least important part of it, and it needed to just kind of disappear. So I made the cord black and just kind of disappeared it into the, the entire design. I have not yet put the head badge here. I'm still kind of unsure if I want that or not. Really happy with how it turned out. It's just a, such a cool lamp. And there's an Edison bulb in there and probably won't be able to see that because of the, there you can see the filaments. 
the shade turned out really nice. I took a little bit of steel wool inside it and just kind of brushed that interior surface. It turned out really nice. heavy on screen like sorry about that all in all and unfortunately I kind of have it in a dark spot here can't really see that color popping through there but on the other side Let's see it a little better maybe you can kind of see how that's kind of coming out I did a little, just kind of a, hammered over some copper pieces, this being the one I did for the lampshade. And the dog is back at the door, so, un momento, let me go get her. Told you she was back. Get out of that glare. My camera lens is cracked on my phone, so you kind of have to hit, there we go. Hit the light. You can kind of see that red there shining through. It really has a nice patina. And then there's one of the other copper pieces I just hammered around. without getting that glare right at you. That's pretty good there. And it does extend a little bit. So this piece will pull out. You can have a little bit of extension on it. Let me uh, let me set the camera down for a second and we'll pivot that down and I'll show you how that works as well. Get you aimed up there where you can see what's going on. So what happens is you can just unlock the Bendex brake. The lever. Pivot it where you want it. as well. Pretty happy with how that turned out. So that is that one. We are complete. Finished with it. Like I said, I'll decide if I want to put the head badge on it or not. As of right now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I kind of like it. I'm going to call that one a win. There's a few spots in the shade that after I banged them out, a little bumpy, but I like it. Maybe you can kind of see the red. Kind of a maroon color. That is a wrap on that guy. And I did take it to a couple shows. It had quite a bit of uh, success. People uh, kind of going crazy over it asking me how I made it, all that good stuff. So I think they definitely were interested in it. Focus. Some people thought it was unique. Sometimes I am really dumb and airhead true blonde moment anybody see a problem with this i do big glaring one right there you know what happens when you leave that cap off while you're driving around <laughs> that happens nice huh so, old Rusty is going to need a bath because that I cannot live with. It just went everywhere. 
Still checks full though, so I mean it didn't. <laughs> I, just, I opened the deck lid to uh, check the oil and check the belt before I leave. This is my standard routine. You know, the belt's getting a little bit of slop in it. You can have about a half inch. Uh, so I'll let that go just a little bit further and then I'll have to tighten that up. And you tighten and loosen by adding and subtracting uh, washers that are behind that there. So this stack of, of washers that are behind there changes the gap of the pulley. So when we get to that point, I'll, I'll make sure I video that. I'm sure there's a million videos of that on YouTube, but I just thought I'd share. I had a uh, true blonde moment last time I drove this guy and now I gotta clean up my mess. It must go down the road pretty smooth though because the cap sat right there the whole time. That could have been really bad if it would have bounced and went in into this. That would not have been good. So thankfully, apparently I didn't take any sharp turns or this thing rides pretty smooth back there. Gurg.